Hello, welcome back, it's been a while. Yeah, babies. Had one. No time for hobby anymore. Certainly not time for doing YouTube videos every week, but I'll get back into it, don't worry. So, um, a quick one to get me back into it before we get back onto the Kill Team stuff, uh, the narrative campaign things I promised. Um, I posted some pictures up on Instagram over the past couple of weeks uh, with a little bit of a hobby time I have had where I've been working on some Sisters of Silence for a friend's Talons of the Emperor army and I've had some questions regarding the bases. So, the, these marble-like bases um, kind of replicate something that I, I assume you would find somewhere in the... well, well wherever the emperor, uh, emperor hangs out. That's what I was going for, that's what my, uh, my friend was after. So, I've replicated that for the Sisters of Silence, much like the Custodies. And a few folks have asked me how I got the effect. Well, it's really simple, so I'm going to do a quick tutorial of that today. Um, all you need is a couple of colours, a, a grey, a white, and then whatever colour you want the veins or colours, you can use multiple colours. I'm going to do this with an airbrush and also with a brush, um, just so you can see how it's done. You don't really need anything special. Um, I have put some UV resin on top just to give it that polished lustre that I would expect from marble. Purely optional step. The only other thing that you'll need is, if you've got kids, you'll have loads of these. If not, some wet wipes. Um, you need to take a couple of those out, let them dry out, and that's basically how we get the effect. We use it as a mask. It's super simple. So, without further ado, let's jump on in, try and get back into this YouTube thing, and um, yeah. If you find it useful, I would really appreciate a sub. Um, leave me a comment, leave me a like, leave me a dislike if you didn't like it. And yeah, if you're new to the channel, hello. If you're not, uh, thanks for sticking around because I realize it's been like six weeks and I've not done any videos, but again, child. Right, let's jump on into this, get it done, and let's see what you think. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get one of those wet wipes that we've dried out earlier. And we're gonna create basically a mask that's going to be the veins. So what we need to do is tease it gently apart. We don't want to rip it, we just want to pull the strands and the fibres apart so it's making some gaps, completely random at all. Some larger ones, some smaller ones, whatever you think is going to work for you. You can do this across the entire wet wipe or dry wipe now, or you can just do it in a section. It's useful if you're going to do a lot of these bases to maybe use a couple of different wet wipes because they do get saturated over time and you don't want to contaminate your bases um, with wet paints. They will get wet obviously as we, we're working with them. So yeah, just tease them apart gently as possible, take your time with it, and get something that looks like this, really. It should look like a, a spider's web, almost. Just kind of silky. Once we've done that, we can get on with it. First thing we're going to do is crack on with the airbrush to start off with, um, and I'm going to just base coat the base in a medium grey. And then we're going to jump in with some white. What we're going to do with that is just put some highlights on it, it just gives some more interest to the base. And then we're going to do the veins in a blue using Citadel's Drakenoff Nightshade. Like I say, first we're going to start off with an airbrush, but we're going to do exactly the same thing with the brush, and you get very, very similar results. Okay, so we've got the wet wipe sorted, we know what paints we're going to use. Let's let's crack on with it, shall we? Like I say, first thing we're going to do is get this medium grey. So I'm using Vallejo Stonewall Grey. I'm just going to fire it through the airbrush and I'm going to do a couple of thin coats just to get full saturation on the base. Nice and easy layers. It doesn't matter if some parts are lighter and darker. In fact, that actually adds some interest to the base makes it look more natural marble-like. Just make sure we've got no black th showing through, unless that's the effect you want. Nice and easy, make sure we get all of the base, and that's all you really need to do for this step. It's super simple, just black the entire thing with whichever grey you chose. Notice that I'm not priming it at all here. Don't really need to for the base, because we are going to cover it with resin, or I am, maybe you won't. Okay, so, white. Any white will do. And all we're going to do is, at random points, just build up some nice transitions from the grey to the white. Starting in close with the airbrush and then pulling back. Doesn't matter if they're all the same level of contrast. In fact, 
it works to your benefit if they're not. So do some some brighter spots, some less bright spots, and be as random as you want. Don't just go with a, a bright spot in the middle. Just all around makes it really nice and random. Trust me, it looks a little bit random now and not fantastic. You can't really see where it's going, but it is a fantastic way to add some interest to these bases and it's what really sells it. So there we go, we've just put some white spots on there, just built up the saturation and we're done. Super fast. Right, the next thing we need to do is get that wet wipe that we teased open earlier and we're just going to pull it over the top of the base. Now I'm using a Citadel paint handle here but you can just do the base as it is. I've put some of that Citadel Drakenoff Nightshade in the airbrush cup and we're just going to airbrush this on top of the wet wipe. Now I'm not going to do an even layer, again we're going to go with a little bit of randomness so some parts will be be more saturated, some parts are a bit less saturated. If you look at marble in the real world, it's not really consistent. Some parts are richer, some parts are more opaque, some parts are lighter, and in fact there's often various colours in there, so you could come in with a different colour ink as well here. Once that's done, we simply take it away, and it's done. There we go. Marble base. All that's left to do is to put some resin on top if you want. Now let's do it with the brush. A little bit cheat here, um, I'm just going to put some paint directly onto the base. Now we're going to have to do some thin coats obviously with, with the brush, it's a little bit uh, longer process but just brush over the entire thing. Get a nice even layer. If you're doing multiple of these bases at the same time, that's even better because by the time you get to the last one, this one will be dry and you can put another layer on it. You're probably going to need three or four layers. Don't worry about that though. Just do it nice and slick, easily. Make sure that each layer is dry before you put the next one on. You don't want to be tearing the paint. It'll uh, frustrate you and end up with a finish that's not exactly what we wanted. So do take your time. As I say, if you're working on multiple ones of these anyway, you won't have a problem. They'll be drying as you're working. Once we've done that, we're going to do exactly as we did with the airbrush version, and we're going to put some white on it. As you can see here though, it did take me several coats to get to the level of opacity that we wanted. I suppose you could leave the lines in here, that might make for a nice visual effect. Um, it's not what I was going for, but you know, your mileage may vary. If that's what you want, you go with it. You see your model at the end of the day. Three coats and I got full opacity here. Exactly where we needed to be. And then we can just jump in with the white. Now. I'm going to use a more stippling like technique here. We're not going to get the same sorts of blends as we got with the airbrush, but that's not a problem. In fact, you might say that the brushed version of this I actually prefer. Um, I went with the airbrush versions for consistency with the custodies, but all we're doing is stippling in some white, again at random, just to create some more visual interest there. Coming back in, blending it into the grey, but we're not going over the top with, with glazing it in or anything like that. It's not that important, and in fact, you won't even notice it once we get to the next step. Just adding some white here and there. High points, low points, it just differentiates it all and gives it that more natural marble-like look. Try not to put paint strokes on straight. So like again, as I say, stippling in. Remember, wherever your brush leaves the base is where you're going to have the most concentration of pigment. In that case then, stippling really does help you get that blend in there. You don't want lines, not for this technique anyway. And just keep coming back and building it up. Again, if you're working on multiple bases, it won't be a problem. Just, just work on them in, in batches, do um, one at a time, and then as you've finished the fifth or tenth one, come back and you can put some more white on and, and it'll be dry and you're ready to go. Once that's done, we're basically going to do exactly as we did before. We're going to wrap the base in the wet wipe that we've teased apart with the webbing. I'm going to load my brush up with some Drakenoff Nightshade here and again I'm going to stipple it on, not using a straight brush in action. Now you want to do this as we did with the airbrush, some overly saturated parts, some less saturated parts. Getting it in, just working it in there, you'll see me kind of like scrubbing the brush around. Your mileage may vary here, you're going to have to experiment, it's not a fixed science. So. 
I found that the swirly motion tends to work better, but for getting the saturation on in the darker parts, I did actually just wipe it backwards and forwards. But I did end up with some pooling, as you'll see later on. It didn't finish, it affect the overall finish of the base, but you know, just be careful with what you're doing. And I would definitely recommend going with this stippling and swirling motion here. I did find that I was having to put quite a lot of shade on my brush just to get it through there, but don't go over the top, as I said. Um, just see how it works. Once we peel it off, we end up with a similar result. It's going to take a little bit longer to dry them the airbrush though, but once it does, there we go, you can see them side by side, and I think you'll agree they both look absolutely fine. If you do put the resin on top, it just adds that another layer of luster and that other dimension to it, and I really do think they work quite well. You'll see the resin that I've used, um, it was just some UV resin, I think it was the Green Stuff World brand that I used on there, and it just brought this extra shine out to the mini. It really does work. I mean, try it with some reds on there, some greens, or even, like I say, try multiple colours. Be, be wary that you do want to vary the um, the wet wipe when you put in different colours on there, just so that it gives you some more interest in the veins. Um, and you're good. Like I say, super simple, really fast way to base your minis if you want in a marble effect. Let me know how you get on. And there we have it, really simple, really fast, um, and if it's the kind of look that you're going for, then it works. Thanks for watching guys, I will be back pretty soon with some more Kill Team and Table Build stuff. In the background, that's my son, it's probably going to be featuring a little bit more, he's never quiet. Anyway, good gaming, and remember, if you're going to do crack, make sure it's plastic. See ya!